What's up, Fearless Agent? Here we are, Fearless Agent Live, inside of the Fearless Agent Facebook group, where I share with you the tips, tricks, ideas, and how to take your real estate sales business to a whole nother level. How would you like to know the truth and the lies when it comes to building a real estate sales team? Well, I'm about to expose it all right here, so thanks for being here. If you're one of the live watchers, make sure to drop an L in the comments below, and if you're a replayer, make sure to drop an R. We appreciate you being here. And I'd also love to know where are you from, where are you tuning in from? Put that in the comments as well. Like, comment, share, and turn on the notifications right now. So let's hop right into it. See, one of the things that I've watched in my last 13 years of career is the acceleration in, um, what's the way to say this, in, in people wanting to build a real estate sales team. It's not a new concept, it's been around for a long time, but it's really accelerated the last several years, and I think it's a great idea if we do it correctly. But the traditional way of thinking of building a sales team is this, and this is the, this is the lie that you're being taught, is that I can get people to do all the work while I sit back and do nothing. How many of you guys have noticed that, that that's kind of been the culture and the idea behind building a real estate sales team for years now? And what we found out is that the leader isn't providing nearly enough value for the people on the team, so therefore, it's better for those team members to go do their own real estate sales business, right? So one of the things that you gotta look at is when you start your real estate business is you've got to say, hey, my goal is to make a lot of money, right? And come from a place of contribution. When you can focus on growth and contribution, you're going to be an even better salesperson. And with time, you're going to get so busy as a salesperson on so many listing appointments, being a fearless agent coaching student, that you're going to need some help. You're going to need help with dealing with processing files, putting it inside of the MLS, making sure the customer experience is on point so you can focus on what you're great at. And that's setting even more appointments with qualified customers. How would you like to set even more appointments with qualified customers? Well, there's a secret to that. Prospect more, get better at your skill set, and become a fearless agent, right? So what happens though, once you've maxed out that leverage, that first leverage, right? You've maxed out your assistant and you realize, I don't even have time for buyers, right? You have to begin to have someone bring into your organization that can then take on those buyers, right? The biggest mistake I see agents just like you making in wanting to build a real estate sales team is we get so caught up in our ego that we begin to say, oh, I'm gonna build this big old team and they're gonna make me a lot of money and we go straight into hiring buyer's agents and that is a mistake. There's no reason you should ever, ever hire a buyer's agent unless you are so maxed out with yourself and at least two assistants. One assistant that's running the front end coordination of the active customers and one that's running the back end coordination of the pending customers. And then also probably someone, one person, it could be one of those two people that is solely focused on making sure you're doing your marketing campaign to your customizable database. Only then would it make sense for you to start bringing people into your organization. And what I highly recommend is, is you don't even focus on hiring buyer's agents. That's been the biggest scam of everyone in the entire real estate industry because we know that the guy or the gal that has the listings is the guy or the gal that is the god or the goddess of real estate. And who would you rather be? Would you rather be the, the, the zit on the gnat's ass or would you rather be the god or the goddess of real estate? Well, you've gotta control the listing inventory if you want to be the god or the goddess of real estate. That's just the reality of it. What if you could get so great though at setting appointments that you have so many listing appointments with sellers, you could train someone to start going on listing appointments, right? Now, all of these are a step-by-step -step process, but there's one thing that every successful business owner has in common. And a business owner is really nothing but a team leader. They're leading other leaders. They're creating other leaders. In fact, I just leaked it for you. Leaders have that in common. They create other leaders leaders. Hey, thanks. You're actually pretty blurry as well. I appreciate the feedback. I can't even see you. Hey, Kirby, thanks for being on here, right? So if you want to be able to create even more leaders in your organization, be an even better leader. So what are some of the attributes of a leader? Number one is create more value than you take. That's where most leaders fail. They're always taking and taking and taking from their people in their organization versus giving and giving and giving. You've got to be able to go create value for the people in your business. Help them achieve what it is that they want to achieve. So realize, that as you grow, you're not just gonna sit back and do nothing. In fact, you're gonna do even more. 
And you've got to be able to develop that skill set to create value for those people. But the quickest way to be able to do that is become an amazing salesperson first. Become a great listener. Because once you can develop that skill set of setting appointments, maximizing your schedule, and creating and automating your systems, it will be natural for that next step to bring someone into your organization to be able to fill the gaps that you need filled, right? Where I see everyone making a mistake is they're trying to bring people into the organization, but there's no gap to be filled. They're just putting people on their bus like they're a school bus driver for middle-aged kids, right? And I don't know if you've ever been on a school bus for junior high kids, but it is out of control. So if you're the bus driver of your business, don't fill it with a bunch of middle schoolers. Fill it when you need help with someone, right? All of a sudden I'm busy. I need help with processing and transacting my coordination of my files. Boom, I bring in someone for that. Oh, I'm so busy. We need someone because we have so many new customers coming on. I need someone to process that. So boom, I bring that on. Oh, we're so busy. I'm setting so many listing appointments. I don't have time for everything. Boom, bring someone to fill the gap for that, right? And so you think of it as filling the gaps, right? And if you know that building a real estate sales team is about us working together to serve our clients even more, not about people serving the leader of the team and that's where everyone is going wrong in the real estate business today so thanks for being here guys if you want to learn more on how to get to that point where you even need to bring people into your business or you want to know how to bring that next person into your business that's actually going to be a great partner for you make sure to go to fearlessagent.com and get signed up immediately www.fearlessagent.com for those of you part of the fearless agent community we appreciate you get with me what would you like to learn more about in these videos i want to help you out like comment share if you're a live watcher drop an l if you're a replayer drop an r make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.